Welcome back to Afternoon Express. He's a fitness model, a gym owner, media personality, and a former national and international professional football star. Easily recognized for his good looks and a series of body tattoos. Please welcome Ryan. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are it's you? It's so good to see you again. And you, it's been a while. Now, the show is all about identity today, and I've seen your identity shift through the years. Yes. Can I even say decades? Absolutely. Tell us where you are right now. Right now, I'm a dad and a husband. Congratulations. Um, thank you. So when you met me 20 years ago, I was a very different person. Um, you know, obviously my tattoos make me physically um, identifiable, but okay. as a person, I've changed a hell of a lot the last 20 years. So, and yeah. what, what has that been like? You know, we on the show, we've been talking about these uh, chameleon-like, morph-like phases that we go into throughout our lives as we try to find ourselves. So if you consider young Ryan, what was he like 20 years ago? Uh, a little bit less reckless in my decision making, you know, okay. so obviously 20 years as a professional footballer. So everything was fast and quick and I reacted fast with that. I had less thinking about my decision making. Today I'm a dad. So what I do, it bears weight. Okay. You know, I can't tell my little boy things and, and I'm doing something reckless. So when he was born about 14 years ago, well actually March 1st now will be 14 years, um, it was a big shift in the way I saw things in my life. And um, I would say that the, the change started from then. Did you say your boy's 14 years old? Nearly 14 now. Wow, yeah. so He's you've got a school. teenager on your hands. I do. And, and, and so I'd love to ask you, what are the differences in identity that you can pick up from where he is right now and where you are? And then the way you were parented to the way you are parenting now? It's, it's shifted a lot. You know, discipline's changed also how, for example, you would implement it. So yes. it's more of a discussion nowadays. It's how I coach really as well, you know, I, I make sure they're listening, my boy's listening, I'll ask him questions, make sure he's engaging with me, I'll ask him if he's put thought behind what's happened. Um, whereas when you're younger, sometimes you're more told, you know, the generational changes that you were told back then or two is now you're advised and, you, and you're given options to talk about things because you don't have the same sort of structure you would have had 20 odd years ago with you being a child and how you were disciplined as a child. Yes. So, so Ryan, I want to ask you, you spoke earlier on about, you know, when you were younger and a footballer, um, Am I correct in saying you were probably driven by a lot of ego because Absolutely. that's what we are at that stage yes, of our lives, we're trying ego. to fit in. Um, how would you say that that has shifted? And give me some examples of something that you did back in the day that you look back now and you, you almost cringe and you go, I can't believe I did that. But the reason you're able to do that right now is because you're able to look back, connect the dots and reflect, which is the beauty of wisdom and getting older. Absolutely. You know, I can't think of one particular thing 20 odd years ago, but... If I had to, there'd be numerous occasions where I would have acted on impulse. Um, let's talk about relations, for example. Yes. Let's start there. Something that's very simple we all go through. You know, if back in the day, you would have reacted thinking, well, this person's going to hurt me. I'm going to move on before that happens. Yes. Whereas now you, you would communicate and talk to my wife and I'd ask her a question and see what her day's been like and why are we happening? Why are these things going on? Whereas back then you were all eager. No yes. one's going to do that to me. No ways, no chance. I'm not, you know, so it was more of a... Um, uh, self-preservation, whereas your ego would kick in more to put you on a pedestal when in actual fact you look silly. Yes, I love that. Tell me about your coaching. Tell me about the, the kind of coach that you are and um, how perhaps you may reflect on, on how you were coached back in the day and the changes that you're making now in the coaching position. That's a great question. You know, um, When I was younger, I, I always related to passionate coaches, coaches who, who lived what they did, coaches who... Uh, support their players, you know. Yeah. Um, you had those coaches always put their jobs first and, and players, we were a commodity. And you had those coaches who loved their players and, and realized that coaches and players will always stick together. Clubs will stay there. We get told to move on, you know. So the kind of coach I am is I'm, I put my players first always. Um, Beautiful. Holistically as well. So I want to ask them how the day is. Right now I'm coaching development, which is quite young. So, you know, they go into school, they have difficulties at home, they might have mm. broken homes. You know what they're going through. So for me to come in and come in hard, a lot of these kids are used to that. Yeah. You know, so I'd rather come in person and put my arm around someone and ask him, how's your day been today? What's going on? Like, for example, yes, I had a young boy come up to me saying he's got a hard time at home, he's got difficulties with his, with his folks, and he's actually lost his dad a few years back, and he just opened up to me, you know, and he was emotional. Yeah. So I asked him to sit down, and he got involved in the game later where he could now enjoy himself once he had mm -hmm. flushed off his feelings. So I want to be a coach that players feel safe, first and foremost. Yeah. I believe if you're coaching kids and they feel safe, you'll get the best out of them. Um, so my approach is one of passion, of, of fun, I need my boys to have, or my girls to have fun, depending on coaching. They must enjoy themselves. They're not having fun. They're not enjoying themselves. They're not going to learn. Yeah. So for me, it's 
arm around them, make sure they're okay, male or female, depending on how I coach both males and females, um, making them feel safe, understanding them, what drives them. And once I know what drives and motivates them, I can get the best out of them. Yeah. I have to ask you about your tattoos, right? Because <laughs> yeah. when we look at tattoos, we, yeah. we, we, it, it, it's, it's a big part of identity. Tell us about yours. So look, I started when I was 18. My dad said, no, my parents don't actually like tattoos. They're old okay. school. Okay, okay. Um, I was a, a stubborn kid based on ego. They all got a story. They're not just random, most of them. Um, they've all about my family, about my spirituality. Uh, I got a little one on my leg that says, I love you, dad. My actual, my son drew it up for me years ago, the little stick band when I was a bit bigger. So I've actually taken that and put it on my leg directly. So they all have um, moments and memories. So when people say, oh, but you're covered in tats when you're 80, my story is on my body, and if they're hanging by my ankles, it was my story while I lived, you know. Mm. So it's an identifiable, as I said, you can look at me and you can see me by my tattoos, um, but internally I'm not the same man I was 20, 25 years ago. Beautiful. Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And it's so lovely to see that you are, you always have been, but now more than ever, you're just a holistic man of meaning. So thank you, thank you for <laughs> thank being you. here. Whether he's stepping out in front of the camera or coaching the stars of tomorrow, Ryan will always be known for being the nice guy. And we wish him every, every success. But now, time for some great music.